Okay, so it's day 14 of the Trail of Transformation. And we've uh, gone just about a half a mile this morning. And I just wanted to, we just wanted to share uh, the beautiful view that we've already found after just uh, half a mile. Thanks for joining us today. And I think we've got a lot, even a lot, lot better views or more views to show you uh, later today. We've been hiking for uh, probably a mile and a half, and this is our first little break. Been uphill the whole way. We've got a magnificent view to show for it. So we're on the Bighorn Plateau, and uh, we have a 360 view here, and it's just incredible. So. I'm Gonna do my best to try to show it to you. So after looking at all the different crossings and uh, Chris trying one and that didn't go so well, so we're gonna just uh, wade across. We're at uh, 11,300 feet. I think we're going to 11.7 today. But we're, we just climbed up this beautiful meadow side of the mountain. So this is lunch with a view. So it's uh, towards the end of the day, we've got one mile and 300 feet to climb. And uh, so I'm taking a little break here. It's been a real slugfest. It's been uphill most of the day, about eight miles. So we'll be at our camp shortly. So we arrived at the base of Forester Pass. Um, it's getting uh, close to dark. 
And we've got a great, uh, we've got a great little tent site here. And uh, Chris has one not far from here, right next to the creek. And uh, this is Forester Pass. And we'll be hiking up there in the morning. This is the highest point on the Pacific Crest Trail between Mexico and Canada. So it's the end of day 14 of the Trail of Transformation. Thank you for joining us. And it's, uh, we are at the base of Forester Pass. And we'll be going up in the morning. It's very cold here. We're way, way, way above the tree line. So there's, all there is is rock and this stream. And that's it. There's rock and stream, a little bit of snow you can see. But um, it's probably 30 degrees right now and very cold. Um, and uh, so that's the status of things here. Had a good dinner of chili macaroni. And uh, we got a gift of uh, apple, or that apple dessert. Uh, don't remember the name of it, but freeze dried again from another hiker that was uh, had too much food. So it had sliced almonds in it, which uh, Chris can't eat. So I, I got to have all the apple crumble. I don't know. Anyway, I wanted to introduce you tonight to um, one of my favorite people, Alma Fletes from Nicaragua. So when Paula and I went to Nicaragua in 2009 to scope out a, a Latin American country to expand our program from the Dominican Republic, we met Alma. And she was directing a preschool program for very poor children. And uh, she showed us uh, around the town and we talked with her. And um, when we decided to start a program in Hinotega in Nicaragua, uh, we hired Alma uh, to work with us and she's been invaluable ever since. So she does a lot of different things, but one of her key things is because she is uh, Latin American, uh, she is our primary liaison between our Outreach 360 and our students maybe more importantly, our students, parents, and families. So tonight I've asked Alma to share what uh, she sees Outreach 360 doing for children in Latin America. I'm Alma Fletes from Nicaragua. I have seen over all these years the progress of Outreach 360 and its students. As of today, we have students working in call centers in Nicaragua, supporting their families economically. Some are pursuing studies at universities in the United States. Others are attending national universities, except from taking English classes as their English proficiency exceeds the university's requirements. All thanks to the English acquired from Outreach 360. Now, with the Outreach 360 Virtual English Academy, we have students from different countries in Latin America significantly expanding our reach. The impact this academy is having on expiring new families truly commitment to their children's learning is wonderful. Various cultures, different experiences, but one common mission. Alma has been a tremendous leader for Outreach 360. When she first joined our program in 2010, she knew minimal to no English. So she knows firsthand the commitment our students need in order to be successful in the program. In addition to student commitment, the program needs funds to provide these opportunities. 
you have donated $16,950 of the $60,000 fundraising target. I encourage you to give till it feels good and know that your donation is matched dollar for dollar. Thank you. I am dedicating today's hike to the good people of my hometown of Watford City, North Dakota and the county it is located in, McKenzie County. My family has a long history there with my great grandparents homesteading and farming beginning in 1907. My grandparents running a rural general store during the depression, and then my grandfather starting three more businesses in Watford City. He was heavily involved in the community, actively working to build a new courthouse when he was county commissioner, was a founding board member of the Good Shepherd Nursing Home and traveled to Washington DC to meet with Congress to get the Theodore Roosevelt National Park approved. My mom and dad both graduated from Watford City High School. My dad was the owner of the local Buick and Chevy dealership and was also a member of the city council. In addition to raising my two sisters and I, my mother opened a children's clothing store on Main Street. Although I only attended five years of school in Watford City, I was able to be involved in the sports teams, the school band, and the local Boy Scout troop. So I'm thankful to the community, the church, and the school for giving me a strong foundation growing up.